Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to today's video. I will be talking about the end of the year book tag. First of all, it's been a long time since I've done a sit down video and it just feels so good to be casually sitting in my reading chair, having all these cozy lights on and chatting with you guys. But also it's been a long time since I've done a tag and it's called the end of the year book tag, but I'm also uploading it literally almost at the end of the year. So in my mind, I was like, what is the use of this tag if I upload it like at the beginning of December when I only have like three weeks left of the year, but who cares? Talking about books is fun. <laughs> so question number one is what books have you started that you still need to finish? Well, <laughs> okay, I am actually currently reading one that I don't have with me, but that is Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski or, oh my gosh, what is her name, her last name? Yes, okay, Emily Nogoski, and this is a non-fiction book about sex. I'm just gonna read the little like Goodreads synopsis for you guys. It is an essential exploration of women's sexuality that will radically transform your sex life into one filled with confidence and joy. And this author, I think, how do you call this in English? Oh my God, in Dutch it's called sexuoloog, but she's like a sex psychologist expert, I think. I'm probably like, putting her title wrong, but she tells you so many things about the female body, about certain myths that we have regarding sex and how to perhaps like learn some tips and tricks. And maybe this book will also make you feel like you're not alone in certain situations. I literally have only read 35 pages. So I just came into like the biology part of it, but I already know quite a lot of things because I have learned a lot about like the human body and sexuality in my previous studies. So I am just really curious to read more of it and I'm definitely gonna finish that one. But one book that I'm currently, currently reading that I will not be continuing on with, I think, is The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. I am maybe one of the thousands of people who really wanted to catch up with all of the like, what is this series called again? The Grishaverse series books before the Netflix show came out. And I read Shadow and Bone in that trilogy and I did not really like it. So I decided to just DNF that series and not continue on with it. In 2020, I loved the Six of Crows duology. So I was totally okay with that. But the only Grishaverse book that I still owned that I needed to pick up was The Language of Thorns. I think this is even like a special fairy loot edition that came in a box three years ago or something. But these are, I think, five short stories that take place in this universe and I read two out of the five so I was I think on page 100 or something and I quite enjoyed it but then the Netflix show came out and I watched it all and I kind of just like lost complete interest in finishing this book. Is this bad? <laughs> Maybe it is. I mean I'm sure the other three short stories will be nice and fun but I don't think short stories are a way of storytelling that I enjoy because it's just too short. It's basically what the genre says about it. So even though I'm like fairly happy and content with what I read so far of this book, I'm just like, nah, not really, really interested in continuing on with this. Next up is, did I have an autumnal book that made me transition into like that end of the year vibe? I think so. And it's one of my most recent reads and that is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Although this book takes place in February, you might be able to tell why this made me feel like I came into that end of the year vibe is the snow. <laughs> this story is a psychological thriller and oh, I loved it so much. I will be talking about it very soon, more in detail in my like recent reads, last wrap up of the year video, but it's about a couple who travels to Scotland and is like in a very secluded part of it. Like not a lot of people are around. There's a huge snowstorm and it's definitely getting colder here in the Netherlands as well. But reading this book in the month of November, I think made me give that like, well, it's actually quite a creepy setting, but it also gave me like that cozy feeling of snow. Although this is not a cozy book, so. <laughs> but I think that this is like a perfect transitional book to go from like, the autumnal vibes in which I think a lot of people also really like to read thrillers and murder mystery books into the snowy wintry setting. Highly recommend. Question number three, a new release you're still waiting for. I am honestly the worst with new releases. I am never up to date with what is coming out or I never really look into it because I will just like hear new releases being talked about on like bookstagram or booktube or book talk or whatever. But I recently received an arc of A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsh. Marsh? 
I hope that I'm pronouncing this author's name correctly, but it says that if you are a fan of Edwardian England, a riotous adventure, queer romance, and a magic-infused mystery, then this is what you need to pick up. Robin knew nothing about magic, now it's trying to kill him. When Baronet Robin Blythe is accidentally appointed as Lésion, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, to a hidden magical society, he's astonished to discover that magic is real and very dangerous. Cursed by mysterious attackers and plagued by visions, he's determined to drag answers from his missing predecessor. Predecessor? predecessor. To do so, he'll need the help of Edwin Corsi, his cold and prickly counterpart in the magical bureaucracy. Oh, how we love like a good warm person with a cold person combination and then like them coming together, I think. Forced to work together, the unlikely pair will stumble upon a plot that threatens the very foundations of the magical world and a secret some have already died to keep. This one came out in November, so it's already released, but it sounded amazing. And when Penn Macmillan UK sent this over to me as an arc, I was just like, this sounds absolutely perfect. And I really want to read more magical stories again. Question number four is three books to read before the end of the year. Well, I am a mood reader, if you guys didn't know already. So I don't know which three books I like desperately need to read by the end of the year, but obviously it would be Come As You Are, but I don't think I'll be able to finish it before the end of 2021. Definitely gonna finish that one. Just because it's nonfiction. And sometimes at the end of the day, I don't want to read like another informational book and I just want to escape to like a fictional world, whether it's like a contemporary world or a fantasy one. But one that I really want to pick up and will be picking up in the next couple of hours is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. If you've been following my channel for a little while, you know that I absolutely adored Meat Market by Juno Dawson. It's one of my favorite books. And ever since that moment, I've been wanting to pick up more of her work, but I haven't done so. And then one of my so, so kind friends, Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe, who you should absolutely check out. She gifted me this book for Christmas, which is just like, why do I have such kind friends? And I don't have any idea, if I'm being honest, what the plot is of this book, but I will be reading the synopsis with you guys. Obviously, it's kind of inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Alice Dutchen lives in a world of stifling privilege and high-end luxury, but none of it means anything when her own head plays tricks on her reality. When her troubled friend Bunny goes missing, Alice becomes obsessed with finding her and discovers a mysterious invitation to Wonderland, the elite party to end all parties. Will she find Bunny there? Or is this really a case of finding herself? Because Alice has secrets of her own and now she has a new enemy who wants her head. Oh, okay, it says here as like the little blurb, addictive and darkly glamorous, this is a searing exploration of mental health, gender and privilege from a best-selling award-winning author. Like I said, the plot still sounds very vague, but if you haven't checked out Meat Market by Juno Dawson, it's so good. It deals with like the fashion and modeling industry that we have in our current contemporary world. And this is like a rather short book, so I will definitely be finishing this one. And I think this book also kind of like goes with the next question, which is, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? I mean, I hope so because I love Meat Market so much. I feel like Juno Dawson is gonna become like an auto buy author for me. But in case for that to become true, I need to read more of her work. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? I promise you. And I will give you an update on this book next year. <laughs> and then the final question is, have you made reading plans for next year? Well, <laughs> my reading plan for next year is to read less books. It's not my plan, but I know it's what's gonna happen. So I'm either just like, you know, gonna adapt to it. This year, I wanted to read 52 books in 2021. And that was mostly because I had like a seven month long gap year. Now we're at the end of 2021 and I can tell you that's probably not gonna happen anymore. I'm currently studying psychology again. I say this in all of my videos. So I'm so sorry if you watch all of them. I'm really enjoying it. It really fits with my interests, but it's just so busy. Oh my God, I don't know why I said it like that, but it's just like overwhelmingly busy to be honest. So I just cannot read as much anymore as I did over the course of this year, which I think is such a shame because I miss reading so much. I do read, but just not as much as I want to. So next year, perhaps I will set my goal to like 25 books for a year because I feel like I can definitely get to that goal probably a little bit more, but I'd rather 
start low for my doing, reach that goal, and even like top it. Because right now I adjusted my reading goal on Goodreads to 45 bucks, less than I initially wanted to, and it just feels a little like sad to change your reading goal to something lower. But besides that, I don't really have any plans because like I said, mood reader, slow reader, so it's difficult for me to make goals and reading plans. But that was the end of the year book tag. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I will see you guys in my next one, which will probably be about the books that I've been reading for the past three months, which were actually quite a lot. And I have tons of opinions and thoughts that I want to share with you guys. So hopefully I will see you soon. Have a great week. Bye.